1995, Johannesburg, South Africa. After 40 years of apartheid rule, whereby the black population were moved to segregated townships in conditions of brutal poverty and denied jobs by the white ruling Africana National Party, times were finally a changing. It has the power to unite people in a way that little us does. In this podcast, for the first time ever, we uncover the true story with first hand accounts about what happened to the New Zealand team and the build up to that final. Something happened that week and, and suddenly all the players were getting calls from all sorts of random people. Fitzy was getting like, you know, two or three death threats a day and, and they're pretty, you know, pretty graphic death threats. And then I can't remember which night it was, but in the build up to the test, a car alarm went out on, on outside Fitzy's window and he rang up. You know, couldn't find any security guards, rang up the hotel reception, like, can you get this car alarm sorted? But no one did. It just went on through the whole night. So it was a really, it was a really interesting build up. On the Thursday lunchtime, I was just going into the dining room and they said, oh, no, no, the All Blacks are in this room over here. And I thought that was strange. And I thought, well, maybe Colin or Laurie had made that decision. So I went along with it. It had to be then that we got you know, food poisoning because uh, it was at about seven o'clock that night, everybody was sick at the same time. Rory Stain, who was one of Nelson Mandela's close protection officers, was put in charge of security for the All Blacks team during that World Cup. On the Thursday night before the final, Stain took a bunch of players to a movie at Sandton City. As I approached the doors to his cinema, he came out clutching his stomach, almost doubled over. I immediately knew we had a serious problem. We raced back to the hotel. It looked like a battle zone, like a scene from a war movie. Players were lying all over the place and the doctor and physio were walking around injecting them. I used to be a police officer. I worked with facts. What my eyes told me that night was that the team had deliberately been poisoned. Journalist Alex Braun, who was shadowing the team throughout the World Cup, remembers the efforts of the All Blacks management to keep the poisoning story from ever getting out. They knew they were sick, they knew they were crook. They were trying to keep it under wraps because they didn't want to make excuses. And they were all also very, very worried about, you know, how it would unsettle the team and disrupt the team. But about, you know, I spoke to Sean about 11 a.m. on the Friday and it was already clear that some of them were already sick then, were already suffering. And I also remember the manager at that time coming to Sean and he said, he said to me on the Friday afternoon, he said, you boys have done this, you boys have done this. And I don't know whether he meant Australia or South Africa or whatever, but he, he knew something was going on a Friday afternoon. So, you know, the All Blacks were already concerned at that point in time. Thoughts quickly turned to how the team would do their last training session. With the majority of the team still unable to train due to illness, team manager Brian Lahore remembers that ghastly day's training. We went to training as, as per normal. Captain's run oh, it was just hopeless. We, we didn't train. There was no way the guys could even run. Saturday the 24th of June, 1995, Johannesburg, South Africa. A sold-out Ellis Park Stadium were eagerly awaiting the arrival of the two greatest teams in the world for the World Cup final. How can, how can I explain to you the moments when you're sitting there, you know, you're sitting there in that stadium and Mandela comes out with Francois Pinar's jersey on? I mean, you cannot believe it. You cannot believe what... The incredible emotion, the incredible feeling it was to see that. A chance now for the New Zealanders to throw down the challenge just as the South Africans have been doing throughout all the pre-match celebrations. Jonah Lamu absolutely living the haka. He's alive once more. Well, the match ended up going to extra time and the Springbok hero, Joel Stransky, ended up scoring a drop goal in the dying minutes of additional time. Back it comes to use van der Westhuizen. Little knock forward, but that's it! South Africa have won the World Cup! After experiencing the most torrid week imaginable, the All Blacks were thankful to be able to escape the clutches of the World Cup and South Africa in general. However, the question on everyone's lips when they arrived back in New Zealand was, what truly happened to the team on that Thursday when 26 of the players fell ill? Were they poisoned deliberately or by accident? If deliberately, were the orders direct from the government or the South African Rugby Union, aka Dr. Late? Or was it someone in the hotel? Or was there another possible guilty party? To listen to the full incredible story where we speak to the players, coaches, doctors and journalists who were all there in 1995, just go to therugbypod.com or search for The Rugby Pod on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.